Um, the next question is actually more about your painting. And you have the fortunate capability of capturing something that n no other human has been able to do. How does that feel knowing that you're painting these things and using materials that nobody else can, can do? Well, it feels good. It feels good. But I never thought of it quite that way when I was at NASA because I had the job that I'd been training for and wanting my whole life, my whole schooling and then uh, training and then professional life. And I began to think about that and I looked around and I said, you know, there's a lot of young men and women here that can fly the space shuttle as good as I can or better. But I've had a experience that's been given to me by this country that not very many people have had, 11 others besides me, maybe I need to somehow find a way with my art to celebrate and document this great adventure. Uh, it's my duty to do that sort of. They've been given this gift what should I do with it? Okay, I could stay here and fly the shuttle some more, but these guys can do it. These girls can do it. I need to do this other thing because no one of the 12 of us is interested in art except me. And if I could learn to do it well enough, then I could leave a legacy for future generations of stories that will be lost forever. It's as if somebody would go along with Christopher Columbus on a ship that was an artist, we'd have paintings of him getting out the boat into the Americas. Maybe he fell out of the boat. It might be a good thing to show. People are human. So that's why I left NASA. I left a job that I had loved and trained for and was good at. I was training to be a shuttle commander. And I said, this is my duty. That's the way I feel now. I feel that doing these paintings are my duty uh, for the gift that I've been given in my life. And I'm always sitting here trying to say to myself, are these good enough? Are these really representative of what we tried to do in Apollo, in the Navy? I think that feeling of duty comes from being in the Navy. You know, do, what's almost the number one thing that you do is do your duty. I wouldn't mind if uh, someday when I'm dead and gone, they wrote on my gravestone, he tried to do his duty. What more can you do? Going back to aviation, where do you see aviation going in the next century? Is, are we gonna see manned flight kind of disappear? Do you, what do you think? I've puzzled over this myself. Now, I can remember just a few years after I became a pilot, there was big rumors in the military that we wouldn't be having any more pilots. Everything was going to be rockets. Drones didn't exist then, but we're going to do it all with rockets, and uh, we're not going to have any pilots in airplanes. And I worried about it, and so did my squadron mates, but it never seemed to happen. And I know now they're saying, well, we'll do it with rockets or drones. I think we'll do a lot of things with rockets and drones, but maybe there are a lot of other things that pilots will be needed to do. So I don't see pilots going away. I don't see airplanes going away. I see uh, some of the jobs they do maybe offloaded to somebody else. We took over jobs that the cavalry used to do, okay? So uh, that's what I see happening. I, I believe that there'll always be needs for pilots. Uh, there'll always be conflict in the world. Things change, technology changes and all that, but humans never change. Uh, there's just as many good guys and bad guys and good girls and bad girls as there was when Julius Caesar was around. And I'm sure they came by them and told them, well, look, we're not going to need infantry anymore because we've got these chariots. So everybody's going to be riding in a chariot. And all the guys that walked around with spears were scared. But <laughs> it didn't happen that way. Guys are still walking around with M16s. So 
there you go. I, I see it just evolving to being uh, more complex. People will have to be smarter to do it. The Navy will train them to be smarter to do it. They can't build things that humans can't do. We built the lunar module that landed on the moon. We built it so it flew like a helicopter. And all of us went to Navy helicopter school there in Pensacola. And then once we learned to fly helicopters, we made sure that the lunar module flew like it because we could fly that. And that's going to be the same way, in my opinion, that the future of aviation will be. It'll have to fit humans to do, and we do some things really good and some things not so good. So, Is there any message that you'd like to give um, young Navy, naval aviators, or for that matter, even the sailors that are just on board a carrier or something like that? Is there a message that you'd like to give to them? I would say that in the military, whatever you're doing, you've got a worthy way to use your life and you're using up your life. You've got a lot more left than I've got, but you're using it up nevertheless. And it's a very worthy way to use up your life. If you're uh, catapulting airplanes off an aircraft carrier, if you're on a destroyer, if you're uh, a Marine, with an M16 over somewhere in a country that you never even heard of, but you're trying to do some things that are good, that's a, a worthy way to use your life. And you've got to stick to that and make sure you don't get moved into a place where you're doing it for the money or because it's easy or because your best friend's doing it. You don't want to do that. You want to use your life in a way that's worthy because you only got one and it's going to go away eventually. And you want to feel like, well, I did the best with that one life as I could do. That guy over there, he did it differently, but this is the best. This is what I can do. That's actually the, all the questions that I have. That's asked. good. Anything that I may miss, anything that you'd like to add? No, nothing. I think that because what you're making this into a 30 minute movie, you got more of me than you can possibly use. So that's good. No, you did good. You did a lot of thinking, uh, Grant. That was uh, good, uh, good questions and good for the Navy. And I'm sure with Gene, who else have you interviewed? Uh, we did an interview with Jim Lovell. Um, oh, he's wonderful. Uh, Major General Bolden, Charlie Bolden. Sure. Well, you, can, you could put us on each on there for uh, 15 seconds. That's good. Wendy Lawrence that we also got. And That's good. I also have a Commander Cassidy, who's a shuttle, who's a shuttle pilot, um, as well as one of the Blue Rangers. We're going to interview him as well. Okay. Now, one of the things that strikes me, and I was thinking as all this went on, you're not put any of the uh, sailors on there that are doing these other jobs. You've got all aviators. How about the guys running the catapult or the arresting gear or stowing the, parking the airplanes? This movie isn't going to show, fit them in somehow? Um, because the pilots are the ones behind the stick and the, one, the ones that are actually flying and giving the feedback of what they feel on the aircraft, those are the stories that we were really trying to focus on. But absolutely see your point. I, I don't think it's good to do what you, in 30 minutes you can't do a lot, but I would at least put, because maybe the story of Jim Lovell is more interesting than the guy that runs the catapult on the Kitty Hawk, uh, uh, seaman third class or whatever he would be. I, I don't think it's good for the Navy to uh, to emphasize it, I, I think where you could go two thirds, one third, but I would never think about doing anything in the Navy uh, or NASA if I were doing that stuff that didn't include everybody that we wanted to affect because I don't think it's good to um, talk about these guys and not everybody. But you do talk about people that have a more, like I say, it's a more unusual story. Jim Lovell has a more unusual story than maybe the 
the guy that uh, runs the arresting gear or steers the ship or something. But I think you, whoever's in charge of this, you ought to tell him that I think he's making a big mistake. That's a big mistake to, uh, to emphasize other people. If you only talk to admirals, I wouldn't like it. I'd say, that's great. How about guys like me? And if he talked then to some other pilots, then I'd feel like I fit in. I know, see, that's that command structure I told you about. Absolutely. It is. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't go. If I were in charge of that, I'd change it right then. Unless my boss came up to me and said, I don't like what you're doing, take out that. I would tell him why it's in there, like I just did you. I'd say, you're trying to connect with all the people in the Navy, yet you're only using the people on camera, a small portion of that group. <laughs> that's, not, that's not smart. Even advertisers don't do that. They show some regular guy trying to buy a Chevrolet. They don't just, every once in a while they interview an executive in, with a Chevrolet or something, you know. But mostly, whoever you're trying to reach is the people you need to put on there with some experts. So Jim Lovell and Gene Cernan, they're the experts. But in general, I got lucky. The catapult guys for me, it all worked. The arresting guys that were down in the bowels of the ship setting the weight of the arresting gear in the middle of the night when they retired got it right and didn't pull off the hook and let me go in the drink. So I think they've got to, uh, I would think of that myself, but that's just an op opinion of somebody else.